I'm going to presume you're here to talk about hot penny stocks. What a coincidence. Me too. <laughs> I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot, and this is Tuesday. It is October 3rd. Now, what I like to do on this show is share hot penny stocks with you. And I determine a hot penny stock by looking at the charts first. I'm all about the technicals, not the textuals. I believe the heat is in the chart. That's where the fire is. And I go looking for fuel to put in the fire. Those are your filings and the press releases. So when I go to a chart, I'm looking for heat, like a lot of volume coming in, or a breakout setup, or a lot of big bounces setting new highs. Something that makes that chart look hot. When I got a hot chart, then I go looking for wood. I go rummaging around through the press releases and the filings trying to find a catalyst. These are the sort of stocks I share with you every day. And I got three for you right now. This first stock, ticker SUNW, Sunworks Inc., caught my attention because she took off today. She hasn't been doing anything for a while, and today, out of the clear blue, she rips, hitting 50% gains. Well, I'm running around looking for a catalyst, and there's nothing to be seen. Now, there was a filing that came out, but I wouldn't call it good news. But it could be seen as a contrary catalyst. But the bottom line here is I lean on the technicals rather than the information. And to me, the chart says something's about ready to happen. So I think we need to take a look at it. So Sun W, she finished the day at 62.3 cents and she had almost 20% gains today. She is on the major exchange, the NASDAQ. So you're going to be able to trade this for free. You can trade it pre-market, after market. There are benefits to trading these penny stocks on the major exchanges. So what does Sun W do? They're in the solar business. Sunworks has been providing high performance solar and battery storage solutions since 2000. The company acquired Silicious in 2021 to extend its national presence and provide high quality performance oriented solutions to sectors ranging from residential to agricultural, commercial, industrial, federal, and public works. Today, Sunworks is proudly paving the way toward the democratization of renewable energy for all with their agile, partner-centric, and technology-agnostic network that has installed over 200 million watts of solar and battery storage systems. Sunworks was recently reorganized by Solar Power World as a leading solar supplier and is a member of the Solar Energy Industrious Association. So what was the relative volume around Sun W today? Nice. We've got almost a thousand percent increase there, jumping from 1 million shares a day up to 10.3 million shares today. Nice jump. Share structure. Only thing they tell us here is the outstanding share count of 44.2 million. We know that the float's not going to be any higher than that, and that's not a bad float. We won't cry over that. Market cap for the company, $23 million. Let's look at the financials for Sunworks. Looking at 2019, she was doing about $60 million. We know it's millions because we've got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on any of these charts. And she pushed that all the way up to $162 million in 2022. And they're taking good profits. Look at the profits growing from $6 million to $8 million to $40 million to $71 million. That's the important factor here. Quarterly, uh, their numbers are up and down, and they're actually on a down number right now at $34.5 million, but still taking in strong profits. Taking a look at her disclosures, we've got two 8Ks and two Form 4s, which have all come out in the last month and a half. The Form 4s are filed whenever the insiders, the management, acquire or dispose of the company's common stock, and we're primarily interested when they buy them or sell them. Both of these Form 4s are sales, but not big ones. A couple thousand shares is all they did. Looks to me like they got to pay the bills like the rest of us. Then we've got two 8Ks here. One, I think, was about a shareholder meeting or a change of management. But the other one we need to take a look at because it's really all we got. The company was contacted by NASDAQ that they've been under the minimum bid price requirement of $1 for 30 days. 30 days! I always thought it was six months you had to be under a dollar. Some companies it is, not this one. So they've been given a warning. They have got six months to get that price up over a dollar. 
They have to close over a dollar for 10 days straight. Boom, they're out of hot water and everything is back to normal. And they've got six months from now, it's gonna take them all the way up to April. Now this is the only catalyst we got. And I'm thinking of it as a contrary catalyst because the price moved hard today towards a dollar. It was really pushing towards it. It looks to me like they wanna get this price up to a dollar. Now, I haven't read anything here about a reverse split. As a matter of fact, that's what the other 8K was about. That was about a meeting that they had had, and they had things they had voted on. But not one of the things they voted on was a reverse split. Thank God for that. So, I see a lot of activity in the chart that it wants to grow, but we can't find any information here any catalyst to push it. All we've got is this contrary catalyst. But like I said, out of the blue, she took off when this filing came out. So let's go take a look at this hot chart. We're going to take a look at Sunworks Inc. now, and we're going to chart all these stocks on Think or Swim, my free trading platform. I got this years ago when I signed up with TD Ameritrade. They're still giving away the platform for free, and signing up with them, that's still free too. So we are looking at a one-year, one-day chart for Sunworks, ticker S-U-N-W. Our 52-week high a year ago was $3.21, and about a week ago, we hit a 52-week low of 48 and a half cents. As you can see, she has been on a downtrend the entire year, predominantly underneath that 200-day SMA. Now, what catches my attention here is the volume. You see how flat it is? We don't have any spikes coming up anywhere. Well, the very first spike we get is right here. It's a tiny one, real little, but go up and see what happened. That little spike initiated a run of 50% and it ran for four days. Then it came back down. We had another spike, initiated another run of 100% this time, getting through the 200-day SMA. As the volume dwindled away, the price fell again. And right now, we've had our volume spike again. Do you think maybe we could get a few days of run out of this? Maybe. Looking at our six-month, four-hour view, our high on the six-month chart is $2.46. And there's that big rip off of the last volume spike. And right now, we have got a volume spike. Now, I want you to see here, I want to back this up a little bit. You can see she's in a downtrend here. Let me go even further back. Look at our PPO. You can see she's crossing right now, that pink line, and she's got to get over it if she wants to get any strength. Well, look how long she has been underneath that pink line. A very long time. A few months. Look at our MACD. Here's our signal line, that big bold line here in the middle. She's got to get on top of that to get any strength. She has been under that for a few months. She is now coming out. And look at our RSI, it is ripping, coming from 39 up to 77, and then coming back down to 70, and still sitting there in the overbought. So the chart is looking hot. She's breaking out over that 50-day SMA right now. All these bars were itty-bitty tiny bars, and out of the blue, no apparent reason, she jumps with volume and price. The chart is telling us something. Take a look at that 20-day, one-hour view. So she's been on a downhill trend from an 80 cent high down to that 48 and a half cents, crossed over the 50, stayed there for two days, and then today she bounced. And that bounce has got all of our SMAs turning up. It's all looking good. She spiked here from about 51 cents up to 75 cents, just over 50% gains. She fell back down, but she's on top of the 200. She's on top of the nine day SMA. If this was the Olympics, I'd be holding up a 10 right now. That is a perfect landing after a run-up. Our oscillators, our PPO is strong, has crossed that signal line. Our MACD has bounced off that signal line strong and is pushing to the moon. And our RSI, she went all the way up into the overbought, hitting 83, came back down, and has started pushing up again. Did we just have a bar? I would swear I just saw the RSI move. Let's come on down to that five minutes, see if it did. So now we've got a chart that has changed. It is an uptrend. She was coming down. You can see our 200-day SMA here, leveling out with the low bubble, and then turning up, and now she's turned up fast and furious, looking good. She did jump very quickly this morning, started her run at 10 in the morning, and ran to lunchtime, noon. 
And then she came back down, breaking through the 50, which was a bit scary. But she started going sideways. That's the saving grace that stops her from falling, gives her time to get her footing, and now she's starting to climb again. Now, I don't like these... 50-day SMA and this 200 haul being over top of her, but she is showing signs of strength. Matter of fact, look at our oscillators. We got a crossover imminent on our, our PPO, percentage price oscillator, and our MACD is just about ready to cross the signal line again. Things are looking good, folks. The company doesn't have any catalyst, but the chart says something happened for a reason. Maybe the reason will show up tomorrow. I see a lot of charts that bounce a day before the good news comes out, so who knows here. But go ahead, put SUNW on your watch list and keep your eye on it. See if we can learn something here. Alrighty folks, I've got a truly hot penny stock here for you. This is One Meta Inc, ticker O-N-E-I. Let's talk about her chart first. It's hot. She's running right now. She just broke out over the 200 and she's taking gains. And she's bouncing off of a low bubble of six cents from April. She's been climbing since April from six cents, hitting a high of 75 cents, well over a thousand percent gains and falling back to 60 cents. Now what's really got me excited is not the technicals. It is the textuals. <laughs> they came out with a technology that they've been using for a lot of different things, but they finally got it to the one thing I think is going to change the world. Honestly, I think what they're doing right now is going to impact the world as much as the internet did or smartphones. That's my opinion. So one meta, she finished today at 60 cents with just over 26% gains. She is on the pink tier and current, and she's got those two green ticks, the verified profile transfer agent, giving us that validated information we'd like to see with the pink. So she's looking good. So what is One Meta about? Well, they tell us here that One Meta is a stack of cutting edge artificial intelligence technologies that solve everyday problems with an innovative and pragmatic approach. From natural language processing to sentiment analytics, and from behavioral prediction to metaverse enhancement. The company is solving problems that elevate our human condition and disrupt our economies. Last year, the company launched its first product, Verbum. This is the one we're gonna focus in on, folks, so pay attention. Verbum is a platform that enables fluent and effective communication among individuals that do not speak the same language. Verbum revolutionizes the way corporations, multiplayer games, universities, training, institutes, retail, and call centers interact and communicate. Now, I know what you're thinking. They've got apps out there that you can talk into with your language and it'll translate it into another language. They've got one of those too. They also use it with multiplayer games. So as people are playing games with each other in other countries, they can understand each other, but they've gone even further. Can you guess where we're going with this? So what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, <laughs> they aren't big numbers, but that is a huge increase, folks. We're looking at about 40 times her normal volume, maybe 30, jumping from 2.7 thousand shares a day. Definitely, definitely under the radar. Jumped to over 100,000 shares today. Now, it's hard to get excited about 100,000 shares, but when you consider the fact that she just did 30 times her normal volume, that's exciting. Share structure for ONEI. Outstanding share count is 30 million. They've got 500 million that they could put on the market. We've only got 30 million. Of that, the insiders own 18 million. That leaves us a very nice float of only 11.8 million. I'm quite happy with that. Financials for ONEI. Not a whole lot here. Thank God we got three zeros, right? At the end of 2022, they made $1. No, we got to put those three zeros on there, $1,000. But I'm sure that wasn't enough to pay the employees. Looking at the quarterly, ah, things are changing. Now, I'm not saying that's a big number either, but that's 44 times last year's revenues going up to $44,000. And if you probably noticed, they aren't paying anything for this money. This is what you get with digital products. You didn't have to package anything. You didn't have to buy any materials or have a factory to make it. So you get to keep every penny you make. 
Disclosures for the company. All right, we've got an 8K here and we've got a 1012GA, which is actually kind of important. The 8K, this is a consulting agreement they made. They hired a company to help them make some acquisitions. That's good news. Then your 1012GA. These are audited financials. This is great, folks. We're talking about a pink, which normally gives you disclosures. Disclosures don't have a CPA look at them. They're just giving you the numbers and you got to make heads or tails of them. So now they've got verified, validated financials. So that makes them more transparent, more trustworthy. Looking at the company's news. Now we've gone all the way back to the beginning of the year, January. All of the news is about Verbum, their new product. Back in January, we got two pieces of news. One Meta AI will unveil version one of Verbum to over 1,000 journalists attending Pepcorn's digital experience. Another piece of news that came out in January, One Meta AI solves millennia of cross-language confusion with Verbum, a web-based app that supports real-time language translations, transcriptions, and closed captioning in 82 languages. Then in March, the company launches Verbum Software Developer Kit, and the company, along with BlizzTech, collaborate to launch the world's first multilingual metaverse. Then we got a piece here in April. The company launches Verbum Call, the ultimate A-driven mobile phone translation service revolutionizing global communication. This is what I'm excited about, folks. Now, they are introducing this at a conference tomorrow. October 4th, which is why I'm sharing this with you. Now I'm going to jump into this piece of news. They tell us here that the company has unveiled the groundbreaking Verbum Call, a game-changing phone-to-phone language translation service set to redefine the boundaries of human communication. With a powerful focus on language interpretation, sentiment, location, and context, Verbum Call achieves an astonishing 94 plus percent accuracy, eliminating language barriers and connecting the world like never before. Harnessing the proudness of Verbum OS, the adaptive multilingual recognition system, Verbum Call generates precise translations and transcripts in 152 languages. Check out how fast this works. Users will experience uninterrupted conversations as Verbum Call transcends language barriers in real time in less than a second for translation and interpretation to occur. Callers and recipients will communicate effortlessly in their native languages, fostering a world of infinite connection. Imagine that I could be talking to somebody in English and he's talking to me in French and we can just keep talking back and forth. Now, I don't know if they're going to match his voice or it's going to be a mechanical voice. I don't know about that yet. They tell us here that from healthcare to education, government, geopolitical, and customer service call centers, Verbum Call is posed to transform industries and lives globally. Medical professionals will now be able to communicate with non-English speaking patients quickly and accurately, while schools, parents, and students benefit from streamlined communications. We are ecstatic to announce and unveil Verbum Call, the pinnacle of AI-based language solutions, a service that transcends language barriers, interpreting and transcribing languages with unprecedented speed and accuracy. Verbum Call is the catalyst that will unite the world, breaking the last great barrier, language. Folks, I'm excited about this. I mean, like I said, I know they got apps out there and they've got different things, but this is going to be universal. You can use it on any phone. You don't even have to download an app. I was reading that. I don't know how it works, but we're going to be able to talk to any language and understand them and they're going to be able to understand us. I think this is going to be hot, folks. I think this is, they've got a patent on it. Nobody else is going to be able to do it. Whew. Is it getting warm in here or is it just me? Let's go take a look at this chart before I pass out. Whew. I'm feeling much better now. Had myself a cool drink, a little smoke. Smoke. <laughs> I'm feeling much better now. So we are looking at one meta. This is ticker O-N-E-I. This is a one-day, one-year chart. 
our 52-week high that hit in November at $1.66, and our 52-week low hit at 5.7 cents in May. Now, she was well over the 200 with this high bubble, but she fell well under the 200 very quickly. And she's only tapped that 200 twice in the last year until today when she actually broke through it. Coming down to that six-month, four-hour view, there's that low bubble that hit in April at 5.7 cents. She bounced off of that all the way up to that high of 75 cents. Once she got over the 200, she did bounce off to 50 once, and after that, she has made up her mind. She is not coming down underneath that 200, and she's climbing fast and furious now. She started this whole climb here at about 27 cents, and she is up there at 78 cents right now. Our oscillators are burning up right now, folks. Our PPO is screaming up. Our MACD is even hotter. Look at those green bars getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And our RSI is way up here at 78 after flying from a low of 45. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. Low bubble here is 27 cents. She was just going sideways until two days ago when she decided to jump. And she has been climbing steady on that nine-day SMA. She's had a couple dips, but she doesn't come below the nine-day. And she is sitting there right now looking smart. Here comes our 20 and our 50 all curving up. We don't have a 200 on this board yet. Our oscillators have cooled off a little bit. She's kind of going sideways right now, which is what you see on our oscillators. They're just kind of going sideways. Looking at our five-day, five-minute. So we've got a nice climb here for two days. She hit that high of 78 cents, came down, looked like she was going to stick to the 20-day SMA until the brand-new 50-day SMA came into the picture. And I said, whoa, 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 let me go talk to them. Let's see what they're about. So she's come down, she's tapped it, and it looks like she's about ready to climb. I see this all the time. New SMA comes onto the board. Wherever it is, the price goes to it touches it, and then goes back to what it's doing. And that's exactly what it looks like right now. Our oscillators, they were all on a downtrend, but it looks like they're just getting ready to start coming up right now. Folks, I'm not looking at this for a run. She could run. She's gone from 3,000 shares to 100,000 shares. She could easily jump to a million shares. But to be completely honest, I think this is going to be a big company. I think this technology is going to be hot. It's going to go global. It's not just going to be in the United States. What good does a multi-language technology do if you're only in the United States, right? So I'm very, here we go again. I'm very excited about this company. O-N-E-I. If you don't put it on your watch list, I'm going to be upset with you. Bottom line. Last ticker we're taking a look at just coincidentally happens to be another U.S. solar company. This is Pineapple Energy, ticker P-E-G-Y. She has got a brilliant chart. It is a perfectly set up atypical breakout chart that is ready to run. Looking at the one hour chart, it looks like it's going to pop any second. Now the company had news not too long ago about expansion. Business is going good for them. But they haven't got anything hot or current. But that's why I like hot charts. They don't need a current big piece of news. All they need is a little piece of news. Even a stale catalyst can get a hot chart moving. So Peggy, she finished the day at 95 cents with about 3.25% gains. And she too is on the NASDAQ. So I told you this is a solar company. Let's get a little more information about her. Pineapple is focused on growing leading local and regional solar, storage, and energy service companies nationwide. Our vision is to power the energy transition through grassroots growth of solar electricity paired with battery storage. Our portfolio of brands include Sioux Nation, Hawaii Energy Connection, eGear, Sungevity, and Horizon Solar Power all of which provide homeowners and small businesses with an end-to-end -end product offering solar power, battery storage, and grid services. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Almost 100%, almost doubled her normal volume of 55,000 shares. Wow, way down there to almost 100,000 shares today. Share structure for Peggy? Oh, thank goodness, we've got ourselves a low float. 
outstanding share count is right at the mark of a low float. Anything under 10 million is a legitimate low float. They've only got 10 million in the outstanding share count, which means our float could be considerably less than that. If the insiders own half, we're going to have a float of 5 million. Taking a look at the financials for Pineapple Energy. Jeez, they are all over the place. Back in 2019, they were at 50 million, fell to 8 million, down to 38,000, and now jumped all the way back up to $27 million. That's crazy. Quarterly, what's that looking like? Oh, that's not looking bad. She was light. A year ago, she's been getting stronger. This last quarter, she did $19.8 million, and they got to keep over $7 million. So they're doing good business. Disclosures for the company. See what we got here? We've got an 8K and a couple of Form 4s. All right, that 8K there, that is about a shareholder meeting, so we don't have to jump into that. And I did jump into those Form 4s again. We've got a couple of small sales, just a few thousand shares. I think people are just paying bills. Things are tight right now. So let's take a look at that news. Now, most of the news here is about their financials. They do have two pieces of news here about them going to conferences. And though we like to blow by this news, it's really important. They're out there stirring up enthusiasm with investors to get more people to invest in the company. And they're also stirring up business with businesses and homeowners to sell their products. Then we've got two pieces of news that came out in September, one on the 25th and one on the 29th. The one on the 25th tells us that Pineapple Energy today announced that their subsidiary Sun Nation Energy has expanded to Tampa and Central Florida. Nationally recognized for its outstanding customer service, Sun Nation will now serve Central Florida homeowners with solar installations, battery storage, and EV charging services. That's the first time we heard that. In addition to SPAN, smart electrical panel installations. As a Tesla Powerwall certified installer, the Sun Nation team has helped hundreds of homeowners to keep the lights on during power outages with their solar and storage installations. The solar company whose flagship office is in Ron Coma, New York, employs 170 New Yorkers and has gained a reputation as a best of Long Island business for 14 years in a row been named a top workplace employer for the past five years. Wow. For its new location, Sun Nation has already hired local Florida residents as new employees, along with transferring one of its New York leaders with over 10 years of experience with the company and in the solar energy industry. And that other piece of news, this one came out on the 29th. Pineapple Energy applauds extension of battery bonus program on A'u. Hawaii. They tell us here that the company applauds the extension of the deadline to a program that has contributed to one of the largest and most successful fleets of residential batteries being used to meet peak demand on an American grid. The extension of the battery bonus program on Oahu, Hawaii up to February 29th of 2024 will significantly add to the current pipeline of projects already signed under the popular battery bonus program. Under the battery bonus program, Hawaiian Electric will pay a cash incentive and provide bill credits for customers on Oahu, I <laughs> can't say that city name, for people who have built existing rooftop solar systems, if they add battery storage to it, they get all these credits. Pineapple has been fortunate to have experienced 40% organic growth in revenue year to date through the second quarter of 2023. The battery bonus program in Hawaii has contributed to this growth. So as I said, business is growing, they're expanding, but this news all came out a week ago, two weeks ago. So it really isn't current news, but it's good news. They're making revenues. There's nothing bad pulling them down and the chart is hot. Just because you don't throw more wood on the fire doesn't mean the fire isn't going to keep burning, right? <laughs> Let's go check out that chart. We're now taking a look at Pineapple Energy, ticker P-E-G-Y. That is a one-day, one-year chart. 
with our 52-week high being back in October of $7.54 when she was very enthusiastic and way up over that 200. And here's our 52-week low just a week ago, 52-week low, 73 cents. Now, I've drawn some resistances here. You can see where I've grabbed them from. If we come in, you can get a better picture. That is our 52-week low down at 73 cents. We've got a strong resistance here at $1.36, another one at $1.72, and then one at $2.17. Jumping on down to that six-month, four-hour view. Six months ago, our high was $3.07, and she's been falling ever since then. Now, right now, she is making a breakout. You can see she was following the 50-day SMA. A little bit over it, but pretty much just sticking up underneath it. Had this big, long wick break the 200. Come back down to the very next bar. She did not fall any deeper. The next one, yes, but not the first one. So, as far as I'm concerned, this is a directional, intentional spike. What I'm saying is she's showing me the direction she wants to go, her intentions, her direction. And I think this is a breakout. She hit the 52-week low bubble, which can be a catalyst for a company that has value. That's like a flashing for sale sign. I'm cheap right now. Come get me. And that's what's going on. We had a couple bounces off of it, and now she's climbing. She came off of that low bubble, gone through all of her SMAs, and she's on top of the 50-day SMA right now, probably getting ready to bounce up here. She'll probably tap that 50 a couple times and then do a nice big jump. That's what that tells me. Our volume is light. We would like to see more volume coming in, but our oscillators are strong. We have a crossover on our PPO. MACD's crossing the signal line, and look at all those green bars, how big they are. And our RSI has been climbing from 46 up to 57. It's finally gotten warm. Coming down to our 20-day, one-hour view. Woo, look at that consolidation and accumulation. That's what that is. People buying and selling all agreeing on the price right here until something changes. And that's what you look for. When you have a real tight consolidation, you look for a change. And normally you look down at your oscillators to see which way it's pointing. And that's normally the way it's going to break. This one broke down. She stepped down once, came up, stepped down twice, and now she's pushed herself up nice and steadily. And look at this, folks. On the one-hour chart, she is sitting right on top of that 200-day SMA over and over and over again. Doesn't look like she wants to come down. Looks like she's waiting for some support. She doesn't want to get too far away from the 20 or the 50, which the 20 and the 50 are coming up to cross the 200. Those are golden crosses. With the price already on top of the 200, with golden crosses coming up underneath it, that could be a turbo boost. We could see a nice jump in price right there. Oscillators were strong, but because of today's sideway activity on the 200, she too is going sideways and even dipping a little bit. But our RSI down here says if we get to the five minute, we're probably going to see some green bars at the end of the day. Let's see if that be so. Uh, yes and no, one of each. Now, that's not a bad chart. We got our low bubble in this corner, high bubble in that corner, climbing the entire way. Look at that bow on our 200. She was falling and turned around, and she's on an uptrend now. We can actually see our volume is growing. It's light, but it is growing. Everything is looking good here. She has been riding on that 50-day SMA. She dips a little underneath it, but she is on it. And looks like she's even trying to push herself off of that up onto the 20. She's getting lighter. Now, we've got a little fight going on right now at the end of the day. But things are starting to turn right on the charts. On our oscillators, on the short, short term, she is coming down right now. Looks a bit scary looking down here. But looking at that 200, looking at it floating on the 50-day, I wouldn't expect it to do anything but come down maybe to, well, let's jump back to that hourly chart. See, maybe here, maybe that 20 right there, maybe it'll come down to 89. At worst case scenario, and bounce back up and really start to shoot. That's just a figure. I don't know that's actually going to happen. So I really like this stock. I really like one eye. I think that one is especially hot, folks. All the stocks we looked at are hot. They all deserve to be on your watch list. They definitely deserve more due diligence. Why? Well, one, I didn't cover it all. And two, 
It's your money, the most important reason of all. So please, go do some more due diligence so you are satisfied it's a good investment. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.